Alright, welcome back to Discrete Math. This is Lesson 6 on the Chinese Remainder Theorem. So why the CRT? Well, it's used to solve a system of linear congruences, and it's used in cryptography, number theory, and math. All of these are pretty important for what we're trying to do. So here's some history. It was published by a Chinese mathematician called Sun Tzu in the 3rd through 5th century CE, somewhere in there and was first found in this ancient Chinese puzzle. There are certain things whose number is unknown. When you repeatedly divide by 3, the remainder is 2. By 5, the remainder is 3. And by 7, 2. What is this number? Well, this is how we figured it out. This is how we proposed the solution to it. Three men walked together for 70 miles, five plum trees with 21 branches and a flower. Seven disciples gathered by the half moon. 105, and we're back at the start. Well, that's pretty interesting. What does all this mean? As we can see, we have here we have the 70 that he was talking about in the first line, the 21 on the second line, and the 15 on the next one, and those correspond to the 3, 5, and 7, which were the uh, moduluses for each one of those. Then we have this 105, which happens to be the product of these numbers. And he says that, okay, 105, and we're back at the start, so that's going to be like our big modulus, so that's all kind of weird. Let's see how we figure this out in a sort of like algebraic manner. So suppose m1 through mk are pairwise relatively prime integers, and suppose that a1 through ak are integers. Then we're going to define a system of congruencies such that this is true. So m is going to be the moduluses, a sub i is going to be the constants that we're going to be solving our system for. This is going to have a unique solution called x modulo m where this big M is just the product of all those smaller moduluses. So that means X is going to be equal to the sum of A sub I times M sub I times Y sub I modulo M. So what is this M sub I and Y sub I? Well, it's M sub I is going to be this big M divided by the small M sub I or the modulus that we're working with. Then Y sub I is going to be uh, the modular inverse modulo this small uh, modulus that we're working with, m sub i, for each one of those i th from 1 through k. Now that probably didn't make much sense at all, so here's an example. So we've got this system of congruences here, x is equivalent to 2 mod 3, 3 mod 5, and 2 mod 7. So first we think of the condition where i equals 1, so this is where i equals 1 for this row right here. So clearly a sub i is going to be 2, just by definition. m sub i is going to be 3 times 5 times 7, because that's the product of the small moduluses, divided by 3, because that's the modulus that we're, wor we're working with for i equals 1. So that's where we get this guy. And that's how we get 35. And then we can just use the extended Euclidean algorithm, or guessing and checking, to figure out that the inverse um, for m sub i, is modulo 3 is going to be 2. You can repeat this process for i equals 2, and i equals 3, right below it, and we're going to find that we're going to get these values for m sub i and y sub i, all of these guys right here. Then we just plug it into our summation formula, and we're going to get that x is equivalent to 23 mod 105. So, what kind of math class would this be without a proof? Here we're just going to take the case of two systems, but you can easily extend it farther with induction or whatever tool you want. So this is the theorem given constants p, q, a, b, and x in the integers, such that uh, the greatest common divisor of p and q is 1. There's going to exist a unique y such that now remember this exclamation point right here after the exist existential quantifier is going to be a uh, representative of uniqueness. So there exists a unique y such that x is equivalent to a mod p and x is equivalent to b mod p and implies that y is congruent to a q q1 plus b p p1 where p1 is the inverse mod q and q1 is the inverse mod p. And this is all mod pq. So this is just a rephrasing of the 
a Chinese remainder theorem with two systems with arbitrary constants. So if we reduce y mod p, we have that y is equivalent to a, because these two are going to be uh, canceled out because they're it's uh, q times q inverse. And with the same logic, these two guys are going to cancel out, making y equivalent to b. So we know that the condition holds. Now we just have to prove some uniqueness. So um, if there exists a c such that c is equivalent to a mod p, then that means that p divides c minus a, just by the definition of modulus. Likewise, c would be equivalent to b mod q, and that implies that q will divide this value. Since the greatest common divisor of p and q is 1, we can say that uh, p times q will divide z minus y. Well, that just means that those two are equivalent mod modulo p q, which is what we wanted to show. So now we have our uniqueness condition. All right, that's the Chinese remainder theorem. Thanks for watching.